I want to give you a puppy. A puppy that I have trained to be friendly and kind and helpful. A puppy that holds my views and my perspective on the world. One day, you take that puppy home and it bites you. Whose fault is it? Yours or mine? Now, I'm not actually a puppy trainer, nor have I ever actually owned a dog. But I am a data scientist and an inclusive marketing consultant, and I've advised brands around the world for over six years about how to make their content more inclusive and representative of society. So let's make that example a little bit more realistic to my world. I want to give you a generative AI model, a model that I have trained to help you, a marketer, be more efficient at producing copy and imagery. That AI model holds my views and my perspective on the world. Your whole team starts using this model. It gets integrated into all your processes and it becomes something that you just use daily. One day, your brand gets accused of offensive content. Content that is considered to be racist, sexist, or ableist. And the campaign in particular, around 80% of it was created by that AI model. Now, whose fault is that? You, the user of the model, or mine, the creator? As an inclusive marketing consultant, I've seen the power that marketing has to change society. When we get it right, we can move people to tears, we can bring joy. But at times when we get it wrong, we can perpetuate stereotypes. So let's take a trip back to 2018, when H&M wanted to create a campaign which represented a jungle theme focusing around how parents spoke to their kids. Think cheeky little monkey, you know, all the little names we have for children around animals. Now they did what they usually do, which they hired models, created a campaign and published it. Unfortunately, they missed how the context changed when a little black boy was wearing a t-shirt that said coolest monkey in the jungle and his white counterparts were expert survivalists. In their team of over 300 people, H&M was not able to detect that simple error. And it cost the brand about $4 billion in unsold stock, damage to their store, and just brand reputational damage. Now, this campaign in particular was not created by AI, but it is the type of content that is fed into the models that we use today. This was the start of my journey, wanting to explore the relationship between marketing and AI bias. Because these types of campaigns train the models that we, we use today, because I found out in that journey that they scraped the internet in order to build these data sets. So if this in content is trained in the models we use today, how do they perceive what we publish as marketers? Now, fast forward to 2020, when a couple of users online found that X, formerly known as Twitter, had a particular way of cropping images. No matter the size of the image, they always seem to crop on the male or the most lightest individual. Now, this was interesting. Twitter, a platform used by many, had this problem and users continued to test it. They threw images of animals, of aliens, of Marvel characters, one of my favorites. But I realized something was missing from the narrative. I wasn't being tested. How would the Twitter cropping algorithm perform on black women? So, I decided to do my own experiment. And I turned to Fenty Makeup, of course, because at the time and to this day, they have one of the widest range of representation of different skin tones. 
So I wanted to see how would the algorithm perform on different Fenty models. I made the assumption, like what everyone else found on Twitter, that it would crop to the lightest skin of the two models. And in most cases, it did. Very predictable. However, I was surprised in some scenarios when it just seemed to crop to the white space in between. Not appearing to detect a face at all. I really had to question how Twitter's algorithm was missing me. It couldn't detect the faces of people who look like me. So what impact is that gonna have if I'm trying to create a campaign that represents black women? Are we gonna be removed? This is when I knew I needed to know a little bit more than just the surface level. So I decided to study a data science master's with the focus in data bias. Now, I was very much inspired by those who've been talking about the work long before me, such as Sophia Noble in the Algorithms of Oppression, in which she explored how search engines like Google perpetuate racial bias, the work of Kathy O'Neill in the Weapons of Math Destruction, where she explored how these large data sets impacted the day-to-day -day lives of everyone. But particularly, the work of Dr. Joy Bolluini, an MIT graduate, when building her own facial recognition algorithm model, found that she needed to wear a white mask in order for it to detect her face. Since 2017, her work has explored the relationship between gender and racial bias. And has done, she's done incredible things to make sure that we're not using biased facial recognition models in cases like healthcare and courtrooms. So, if we've been aware of the bias since 2017, and many have been working on it, where are we now? As we step into the age of generative AI, how will these biases impact the work that marketers create? In 2023, inspired by the work of Dr. Joy Bolluini, Bloomberg conducted their own research. They used a platform called Stable Diffusion, a text-to-image AI generative platform, to create 5,000 images of faces related to different skin tones, different job titles from high and low paying. They then characterized these by their skin tone. They found for high paying jobs, such as CEO, director, or doctor, the skin tone was more likely to be lighter. And for low paying jobs, such as social worker, healthcare worker, or cashier, the skin tone was more likely to be darker. Now, this bias wasn't only in skin tone, but also in gender. Now, the images created by these AI models aren't of real people. So when coding the images, they label them by their perceived gender of male, female, or ambiguous. Disproportionately, they found that men were represented in the higher pain roles, and in the lower pain roles, they found majority women, like the role of housekeeper. Now, at times, these biases within this text-to-image generative model were 10 times worse than what we have in current society. If you take engineer, for example, currently, we have about 16% women represented in engineering, which is a lot more than the 1%. So how are these biases impacting the day-to-day -day of marketers if these are the tools we're turning to? These are the tools that we're using in creating content and getting, making sure that we represent society. As marketeers, we know the power marketing has to say who can and cannot be a CEO. We know it, the power it has to move people through emotion. And unfortunately, when you're using an AI model, you really should approach like you would approach a dog you have not trained. Beware of dog. Because remember that puppy I gave you earlier? 
I'm sure you were hoping that it would turn out to be a family-friendly, kind, helpful, playful puppy. And you'd be very much surprised if it actually turned into be a guard dog. One that likes who it knows and barks at those it doesn't. This is the current state of generative AI. And as marketers, we need to understand how to use AI responsibly because we do not want to repeat the mistakes of the past. It may not be our fault how these models were made, but it's our responsibility to use them to better for everyone in society. Thank you.